Hi, I'm homosexual Brian Safi. And I'm feminasty Aaron Gibson. And this is Throwing, Throwing Shade, Shade, where we take a weekly look at all the issues important to ladies and gays and treat them with much less respect than they deserve. Happy Merry holidays. Christmas to you. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Do you know Jingle Bells was, in fact, originally a Thanksgiving Saw song? that on Twitter. Someone Absolutely. tweeted us that. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Wait, Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, Jingle, Jingle Bells, Jingle, Jingle Bells. all the rock. way. Yeah. Hmm, no. I guess it was. No. Jingle Bell Rock has always been. About the Flintstones? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Jingle Bells, apparently, was originally a Thanksgiving song. What are you doing for Christmas? For Christmas? Ah. Uh, Shop till I drop. Uh, t- Name the store. Tell I'll me be about there. it. Talbots. Maxinista. Oh, all of it. Black White Market. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Maxinista. I got I'm, Maxinista I'm such card. a Mac. I'm a shoe lover. I'm a DSW shoe lover and a total. It's so funny when I'm with my friends at Le Cirque or at the Ivy. Yeah. And I wear my sunglasses and they say, "What can I get you?" And I say, "I'm a Maxinista." That's so funny. Yeah. I'm a. I'm a. Uh, a Marshall Countess. Oh. Yeah, so I'm a, a Marshall's Countess member. So they, oh, you're so you go lucky. in and they yeah. put a robe on you and they go, uh, would you like to see the sheets that are on sale? And you I go, what? oh, I would. I have no problem with any of these places. Like, who doesn't love a deal? The problem there at all of them is the lighting. It's ultimately the lighting. Oh, I know. What are you talking about? Uh, my The first thing I do when I get to TDD Max is I take a bikini that's two sizes too small for me. I go right into the fitting room. <sighs> And I throw the bikini overboard. I just look at myself naked. Yeah. And the, with those Western doors, I just uh, swing the Western doors open. You know open, what I do for fun? And I go, look at me, down light and all. That's it. You know what I do for fun sometimes? I'll, I'll do cowboy. I'll get a cowboy look okay. from, you know, Ross or Marshalls or whatever. Right. So leather vest, my, yep, denim shirt. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Sam hopefully Shepherd with hat. some nice paisley on it or like a design that says peace. Oh, that's Ed good. Hardy cowboy. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Now I get with it. With true religion jeans. Right. You know what I mean? A boot with a nice chunky heel. So you click clack down, this, down the stairs. Clickety clack clack clack. Uh, and then I'll go- I do think that's a good look for you. You should a- think about it. No, I know. Douse myself with Nautica or whatever they have that day. Dracar. I'll go in, take my flask out, dippity do, walk out at TJ Maxx. Yeah. Okay. And walk out of the saloon doors and just go howdy. And then no one says anything. So then I leave. Do they have the saloon doors in the changing rooms at the TJ Maxx for men? Do you know what I'm talking about? I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Every they time. Either, and then they, they all have that. And then they have that thing where it's like, they're the only the places. The number circles? That, they're the only places that still have uh, 180 degree mirrors. Do you know what I mean? Where like you, you step up on that thing and there's just mirrors surrounding you. No, Banana you. Republic has those. You're kidding. No. They have, they have the, th- with the side mirrors. Listen, they're hedging their bets all wrong. Like, if it looks good from here, don't risk it. I don't trust a place that doesn't have a carpeted step for me to step upon. I got to see what it looks like when I'm up high, that's, you know? That's true. Why the saloon Why do they doors? Do- that's what I never understood. I have been going to TJ Maxx with, since my Aunt Sally okay, introduced me it. to it. We get 1983. It. Every, from then to today. Was if it I a go formal to, ceremony? Uh-huh. Was she like, Aaron, I'd like to introduce you to someone very special in my she, life. I had a blindfold on. Yeah. I was like, where are we? It sounds busy and crazy. And she was like, don't worry about <laughs> yeah, it. We're in the seventh Ring of hell. She's like, I hope you like Liz Claiborne at a discount. Uh, so, but the saloon doors every single time. Talcum powder. There's always a sale on talcum powder there. <laughs> anyway. Anytime I would go out of them, in my mind, I would whistle. Yeah, totally. Every time. The I good, the bad, and it. the ugly. And you was a open horrible with whistle, both by hands. the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, it was the worst whistle. I lost I'm a, my whistle. I bet too. That sounded close. It's really worth it for the face you make. <laughs> <laughs> da 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 da. <laughs> That's it. My dad's a really good whistler. Okay. That's great. He had a special whistle for our dog, really? which he told me three years ago. Can he do the this? Uh uh-uh. uh. No. The taxi cab whistle? Yeah. He can just do like a very like, like clear. That's nice. Uh, you know, back in the 20s, whistlers were very valuable. I'm not kidding. In what way? Vaudeville. That was like a whole act was whistling. Oh, that you would just like. Yeah, and people would be like, you know, people in the twenties like just heard a noise and were like, Wee! like just so excited. Anything to get them distracted from their poverty. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So whistling was like that really saved him. I mean, FDR said that whistling. I was my great great grandfather was the breadline whistler. He would just come to the breadline and he would be like, whistle for everybody. You suckers! You suckers hungry? Well, yeah. how about this? Yeah. 
Oh, I'd like that. Though. And they were like, they were like, <laughs> come again. I can barely hear you, Mister. Back in the day, my great great aunt Annie, yeah, was she had to hide in the laundry basket because they thought the Indians were going to get her. Yeah. Oh, the Indians. Good that you still use that phrase. I have a question. Here's here's where I think TJ Maxx has come full circle. Okay. So by the way, I cannot. Well, this is not what we intended to talk about. But go ahead. We're supposed it's, to be talking about Christmas. That's fine. I, the reason no, I, this is what I want to be talking okay. about. Okay. I'll fine. tell you the trajectory, which is I watched the t- um, Chris Rock thing about Christmas and how com- commercialized and materialistic it's been. Mm-hmm. So that's why I made the joke about shopping all the time. Oh. You know. Then TJ Maxx. But here's the thing. I was at TJ Maxx buying flip-flops because I had to go get a, um, the my ingrown toenails cut out and you can't wear regular shoes oh after you have God. that done. I'm going to throw up. So I had to go get some flip-flips. So I went to TJ Maxx to get my flip-flips uh-huh. and, then, <laughs> and then I was like, ho, oh, interesting. I wonder if Ho, have, ho, ho. Ho, ho, interesting. I announced to everyone in line. I wonder if they have the perfume I used to wear when I was a big smoker in high school and I, it was the only perfume that would cover- Can I guess? Yeah. Which, You're never going to guess. White shoulders. No. Okay. You mean on. white diamonds? No, white shoulders. By whom? Estee Lauder was a thing. Oh. Wasn't that the one that would stain your clothes brown? That's youth do. Youth do. No, they also had white shoulders. Okay, I'm going to think of another White one. shoulders would, was a brown was a brown perfume. <laughs> <laughs> or would it eventually stain like when you read when you Poison. Read a, when you read a... I did, wa- I did used to wear poison, but that wasn't the... <laughs> okay, let me think of it. That was one. when I was in fifth grade and I was like, I'm fancy, CK1. Huh? Yeah. Nope. Hang on. I didn't like CK1. Um, You're Steffi never Graf, guess it. didn't you, she have a perfume? Sure, why not? You, Halle Berry has one, so why not Steffi yeah. Graf? Gabrielle Reese? A union. No. Uh, do you want me to tell you? Is it a, a named after a celebrity? No, it's named Is after it a name our brand? purse. Yes. Dooney and Bird? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are you wearing? Dooney and Bird. Uh, yeah. Quack, quack. Yeah. I don't know. Bubblicious. calling. What? Fendi. Have you ever smelled oh, Fendi perfume? No. It I would have never guessed like it. It smells like a rich French prostitute. Yeah. But I th- it was so strong that I was convinced that it was the only smell that wouldn't... Sh- that would take away the smoke? But it never did. It just made your smoke sound- smell, smell pretty. Yeah. Yeah. But... Um, it made... It, that smell reminds me of all of my Arabic relatives that I would see at the Middle East. Yeah, Festival. that's what it smells like. All the women done up like crazy hair and that, that per- the perfume smoke, over the cigarettes. I love that smell. on the water, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's what On the Waterfront was about. Did you ever see the movie with Marlon Brando? On the Waterfront? Was yeah. that where he fishes and and Catherine Hepburn's like, where you been? Where's my fish? Yes. Yeah. And also, it's the really ultimately the story of a woman who wears too much perfume. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, oh that's good. I and wish then he I quits his job. Oh, he's like, I can't take the smell? Yeah. The I old- could have been a contender because he wanted to work in the perfume industry lush and the perfume department at neiman marcus give me instant migraines me too i have to go in there with a bag of coffee yeah just to just to d- dilute it yeah yeah do you know that I that's just what you're supposed to do litter at everybody do you know that's what you're supposed to are you still going into malls and <laughs> only neiman throwing marcus kid, throwing kitty litter at people? they're like dracar noir and i'm like dracar this bitch and i just throw, throw kitty litter, litter. which actually is spiky i oh, mean have you ever stepped in kitty litter like on purpose well Stepped in it. Yeah. I put it. It's my garnish on all my dishes. Sometimes I pretend it's diamonds, oh, and I go, "Oh, my, my my little uh, my little kitty's walking in diamonds." Isn't that's that funny? how you clean your kitty litter out. You do it with your hands. And you're like diamonds. Diamonds. Yeah. I don't even have a cat. You should do diamonds off forever. I do. And then, but there's cat poop in your hand, and then you put that in the toilet. I do. Or your garbage can. You can do either one. I did get you a Christmas present. Oh, you did. I got you a Christmas present. Can I say one more thing about Fendi? Yeah. So I was like, oh. I'll buy this perfume because it'll remind me of. I'll be oh, sad. Oh, sorry. Or yeah, it's just not a good story. And then I was. They don't have. They don't sell it anymore. But they do sell it online, and it's a vintage item, and it's now two hundred and fifty dollars for a bottle. Well, you could have bought a house, oh, right? I didn't even know you this were is perfume. That. Yeah. Oh. Um, what is my gift? I wrap. I wrapped it. I forgot that because I didn't know we were doing Christmas gifts, and then you said that for we Christmas. Were. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. So I just stopped by and grabbed something, but it's. Oh, it's. Oh my it's god, I'm there. so excited. It's in there. It, what, I wrapped what? it. Oh, wait, this is all for me? No, 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 no. This, so this isn't mine? That's not it. Okay. So th- this isn't mine? Um. This sh- this Asics no, 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 I need fluid to, ride? I, I go to the gym. Fluid ride? So you just put all your fluids on this and you stomp, stomp, stomp. I pee in them and then I run in them. Oh, that's good. Um. That's my jacket. Oh, is Please it? Please don't touch my calendar. <laughs> is it your, are, are it no, these? No, 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 no. These Give are broken, these are, by the look way. How fun, no, they're not. Look how funky. Oh, oh, that's fun. They fold in on themselves. Oh my God, are those made by Transformers? Is no, my Warby Parker. These were cheap though. Is this <laughs> very rare. so? This isn't it. This is my things. This it? No. 
This? No. This? No. This? Mm -mm. This? No, I swear it's in there. Oh my god, no, it's not that this. either. <laughs> it's not that. <laughs> it's, you know, there's a song from those movies. Secrets Exposed. <laughs> a song from those movies. See what's in there. I bet that CD's not even in there. Oh, you wish. Dolly Parton. <laughs> Gayest collection, Cat Power Elastica, <laughs> Fleetwood Mac, the, 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 the please the greatest hits, which is like worse. You should just own the albums. <laughs> I own all the albums, including the greatest hits. But you can't be bothered to put you. You have that twelve disc changer in your. I do. In your Acura Integra. I do. Dolly Parton and then yeah. Cat Power's son, which you stole from Cat Power. Yeah. So the CD's not even in here. It's no. probably in your DVD player. But that's not the gift. Oh, is it this? No. T one ticket. Try this side. One ticket to the um, Costa Mesa's. Oh, there, I see it. Vintage. Si oh, this. Yeah. From my liquor collection. <laughs> oh yeah. Hennessy I borrowed cognac. it. A, I borrowed it a week ago because I got bored on the drive home. But, oh, you did. Yeah, but then I decided to bring it back. Bottoms up. Because I got Merry bored Christmas. this morning. Oh yeah. I would have been so shocked I for some who knows what reason. I cook with this. I don't drink it. Oh, you don't? Yeah, well, because I don't have a straw. Oh, well, then give it back. Oh, yeah. Okay, I brought it. I gave you a Christmas present. Oh. But I'm, I mean, I bought you a Christmas present. It's in here. Don't be shocked, but you have to flip the pages to get it out. So you can't have the New Yorker. I wouldn't anyway, because this is completely racist. Oh, the Redskins? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, turned right to it. Vaginal contraceptive film? Yeah, but I don't know if it works in butts. What is film? Well, my friend Tess told me about it, so I bought it one day when I was going to a, a corn maze. And... <laughs> Keep so I going. To, I'm not stopping you. I took it to pancake breakfast, and I was like, hey, does anybody use this? And does anyone need any on their pancakes? <laughs> yeah. And... But I'm afraid to use it because she says it works, but you have to put it up there for 10 minutes. But works what? What do you mean works? Kill spermies. It's sperm's biggest enemy. Can now, I? Yeah, you open it up and but you, there's nothing in it. It's a vaginal <sighs> film, but I don't know if it works in butts, Brian. I assume it works. You can put it in your mouth, probably. Can't you just use white strips? Oh, that it's probably a Listerine strip. You should just test it out to see if that's accurate. Ew! What if all my sperm die inside me? That's probably what'll happen. What did it taste like? Did you taste it for a second? Vagina. But you should. If you're not going to use that, I'll take that one. This one? Yeah, you. I don't want like to waste. Well, so I'll show you how you do it. Okay. Do you want me to show you? Don't put it back in there because why? That. You put it over your fingers. Put it over your fingers and then you go. Shove it in. Bloop. And then you try to see. So it's see essentially a condom? It's no. Well, that's a good idea. It's no, it's liquid spermicide. I mean, it's solid spermicide. And what happened? Oh, I can yeah. See clearly now, now the, the sperm, sperm is, is gone. gone. <laughs> yeah. Merry yeah. Christmas. Thank you so much. Well, I am Santa Claus. Oh, you... Is this like I am Sasha Fierce? Yes, oh, exactly. Okay. Almost. No, I was naming the name of a new Christmas movie, Christmas documentary that Morgan Spurlock did called I Am Santa Claus. Okay. Oh, did Santa Claus eat a bunch of the Big Macs and then he gets sick and exactly. then he's like, I'm fat. Yeah, exactly. And then he's like, oh, what would it be like to be a vampire? Sure. Or what no, if I... What I if, don't remember what other... Else. What if I only worked minimum wage jobs all over the city? Exactly. Yeah. I like how we're like making fun of... He's <laughs> a great dude. Yeah. Anyway, I'm I don't like his handlebar beard. No, I don't either. Yeah. Um, okay, so Morgan Spurlock has a new documentary that's on Netflix right now in iTunes called I Am Santa Claus. And it basically follows uh, people who play Santa Claus, old oh. men who play Santa Claus. Not the real one, kids. These are all fake. <laughs> so it follows... <laughs> it follows the kids... What if I got upset just now? <laughs> <laughs> it follows the old men who play Santa Claus. Right, guys? <gasps> parents so it follows the guys if any children are watching this the damage is done it's already play, it's already happened it follows the guys who play santa claus you know at christmas time the and old alcoholic rapists exactly well it doesn't follow those okay this follows some other ones who uh, it sort of follows them the rest of the year like sort of what their lives are actually oh like. it's sort of like Drinking you know slice of life story on, on the beach yeah there santa christmas claus in beer? july right because you got to grow that beard all year right yeah, I would think so. Unless they do a fake beard. I hope that's a chapter in the doc. 
Me too. You know, the, 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 yeah, me too. I hope it's a chapter in the dock. Are any of the guys gay? Hubba Jabba Jabba. That's where I'm headed. Love Star Wars. Yeah, that's where... Oh, that new Star Wars trailer. I haven't Doesn't seen it, just, it. It just looks like rides. Whatever. So, um... So you don't care about if kids get destroyed about Star Wars, but only Santa Claus? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, according to Morgan Spurlock, in this documentary, the Santas are shown for who they actually are. Flawed, flesh-and-blood men who feel an overbearing responsibility to protect the integrity of the spotless, untarnished reputation of the red suit. These guys are oh. serious about it. And, like, okay. you know, genuinely like playing Santa Claus. It, I guess it gives them, you know... A good feeling to make other people happy. And That's nice. It is. These these men seem nice. Like they, you know, I, I there probably are some pervy drunk Santas out there. These were well, not. bad Santas. The movie. You know, I loved that movie. Oh, it's so funny. It's so funny. Yeah. Okay. So, um, one of these Santas lives in a trailer park in Central Michigan. One's a former pro wrestler. Yeah, Mickey. I don't remember the last name, but I'll get to it. And Mouse? Um, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> And the other hey, one... Hey, Mickey Mouse, a pro wrestler! <laughs> yeah. The other one is a guy named Jim Stevenson. He's 73, from Texas, has a partner, is gay. Wow! Yeah. And uh, he's also the winner of Mr. Texas Bear Roundup. Great. So, oh, do they all wear suspenders? Winning all titles. Yeah. He, I think he wears suspenders. Mm-hmm. Um, I know those kind of guys. Tank top suspenders. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, people who... Watch. See this movie on Netflix or iTunes, or clicking on it. I guess thinking it's a Christmas movie, not bothering to read descriptions. Oh, but there's no time. Yeah, if you're gonna sit and down also, and watch something for a long period of time, you don't have time. Even if you do, like, who cares? So people have been going crazy on this movie for on their on the movie's Facebook page and um, the on Netflix. Netflix comments and all that kind of thing. There was actually an Australian headline that came out this week called "Ho Ho Mo: The Sand Is Out of the Closet." Great tagline. Great. Great headline, Australia. So here was one from Facebook. Only in America can you make a mess of Santa and get away with it. This movie's on my very, very naughty list, and they won't be getting off it anytime soon either. Well, that person's right, because they don't do Santa Claus in Japan, yeah. Sweden. No, they do. Sweden? Santa Claus. Oh, Santa Claus! <laughs> yeah. With a Schwarz Pete. Yeah. You know, the, they're Schwarz trying, Pete's trying to the, get him out. Yeah, devil man. Devil Santa. Uh-uh. Black-faced helper. Oh, right. Yeah. You're right. Where it's where a lot of bunch of white people put blackface on and go, this is fine because our history. And then everyone's like, please, yeah. please look at shut yourself up. and what you're doing. Yeah, shut it. The The review went on to say this, which really, I mean, they really captured. Just the idea of like people from that part of the con- part of the world in blackface going, no, it's fine. Yeah. Just living in a dream world. What are you... So this review went on to say, this film also had very bad writers, directors, and <laughs> actors as well. A, very bad. It's a documentary. So it was a documentary. So they, they, these people clearly had no idea what they were doing. They're always watching. disappointed when the Kardashians don't win Oscars. Exactly. Another Netflix user said, gosh, isn't it possible to watch a documentary? <laughs> First of all, isn't it possible to watch a documentary about Santa with my kids? First You're of all, no. crazy. First of all, to use the phrase, a documentary about Santa, as if there are many. And second of all, this woman's problem is going to be, I'll read it, that Santa is gay. Shouldn't the bigger problem be, you're watching a documentary about Santa with your kids and they just found out he's not real? Like, isn't that the bigger problem here? Yeah. Anyway. Can do- I watch a documentary about the falseness of Santa Claus? Yeah. With my children? With my children? With I'm my babies? The gay homosexual agenda being jammed about down my eyeballs? Yeah. Gosh, isn't it possible to watch a documentary about Santa with my kids without the concern that they'll have to witness two old men kissing in the mouth? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, they do like pre- like uh, alien they style do. They where do there's kiss a mouth crazy. inside of a mouth. That's true. They do kiss crazy. Like they lean in for like a sweet little peck on the mouth and all of a sudden another ma- one of their mouth, one of their, oh. it's an alien mouth. And then the other one does Beetlejuice style. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Swallows the head. It is scary, but that's how gay people kiss. Yeah, I know it. That they'll have to witness two old men kissing in the mouth? Put up a godforsaken warning. At least say gay action to know what to expect. Gay action? She, this woman this woman couldn't handle gay action. If she saw no. two naked guys going at it, this woman would have a fucking She would know what attack. to do. She would just drop down. Why are they doing that? Yeah. Why is that going in that hole? Yeah. Ah! Yeah. Ah! Yeah. Ah! Yeah. Ah! yeah. Dear Netflix, yeah. I was just getting yeah. a heart attack. She goes, 
She goes at the end. Thanks very much. Now I'll have to explain what business two men can possibly have kissing each other in the mouth. <laughs> Has this woman ever even kissed? Like, I don't mean to be a dick, but like, what are you talking what are you about? Doing kissing in the mouth. Yeah. I love, a, I love to be kissed in my ear. Please I don't. love to be kissed in my nose. So this pro and wrestler. I especially dude, love being kissed in my in mouth. In my mouth. I love being kissed. Whenever I go home, please, Derek and I have this little ritual. Please that we write do. a movie just called Kissed Kissing in the Mouth. Kissing in the Mouth. Kissed in the Mouth. And every every other line of dialogue is going to be totally normal, like this woman's review. So it's clearly not an ESL thing. And everything's just going to be like, God, I had such a great day. Da, da, da. We had such a romantic day. He kissed me in the mouth. And it's just, I'm just going to keep talking about someone who kissed me in the mouth. But in all fairness, when I get home, you know, Derek and I have a ritual that, like, you know, we kiss each other hello or whatever. But it's so it's so romantic. I just walk in the door and I just go, yeah. Oh, and he, and then ki- he... he kisses the roof. He does little pecks on the roof of my mouth oh, and then on the good. insides of my cheeks, under my tongue, you know. You know what you should do? You should get that Beetlejuice head shrinking stuff so he can shrink his head down and oh, then put his actual head Like the guy in the waiting in. room? Yeah. It's a great idea. Yeah. So the Mick Foley, who is the WWE. Oh, I know him. I love him. Okay, so he's one of he's the Santas. A... He is? Yeah. He's one of the biggest feminists. Is he really? Yes, he's a huge feminist. Well, he seems very cool because he said- He's super cool. I'm thinking Where is he a Santa Claus? I want to- I don't remember. I want to find out. Mary Sue? Oh, no, that's something else. That's a website. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. He said, I think there are going to be two types of reactions to Jim. Some will be touched by that by him, and others will work hard to convince themselves that they were not touched by him. By that, he means, like, like he's the, going to affect you. Because, you know, it's a sweet story. Right. So, like, you're going to have to you're, you're gonna have to really dig deep to find a hatred for him. I think These people what he's are saying. finding it very easy. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so... I guess Jim isn't phased by the criticism. He says, uh, at the end of the day, we're grandpas, we're good people, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Also, for someone that old, I don't know, the, I haven't seen the documentary, but I assume if he's saying he was a grandpa, he must have lived as in the closet for a very long period of time and now has, has finally been able to be exactly who he is. That's a triumph. There's also something, and this is really stretching it, but I want to I go there, as I feel like Nancy Grace would say. There is an element of i don't know what to what the word is sexism maybe or maybe it's just extreme homophobia what would be the difference if a gay what would they parents be so afraid of with a gay santa what it is is that they would touch little boys okay but a straight santa if these people had an equal amount of fear their fear would be that they would touch little girls but no one's afraid of that do you know what i mean mm-hmm. like it's this is clearly such a thing of like oh well he can't be gay cuz then he'll touch my son any Santa could touch a kid. I don't know how they would in public like that. Do you know what I mean? Uh, With a camera in their face? Yeah. But I it's guess, hard. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. But you're right. It's like, it's why are weird... you not afraid of like your daughters being molested It's by the sort Santa of thing. It's, what it is, is it's the same thing as saying that all pedophiles are gay. Yes. It's that sentiment. That's that's what the... I don't know if these people are doing uh, like higher level... No, uh, they're not. I think it might be like critical. subconscious. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I do. I'm doing. I'm hosting Cosmos next year. I don't know if I told you. Cosmos. Yeah. The the outer space show. No, no, no. Digital shorts on Cosmopolitan. Oh, sorry. I'm hosting a series, and I just wanted to throw that in. Oh, okay. It has nothing to do with anything. When did you get that job, and how? Uh, Well, I told them I look deeper. Oh, and they were American Beauty. American Beauty. And then you did that with your ear. (laughs) Cool. They hired. And they were like, for sure, why not? Yeah, exactly. Anyway. So here's what uh, Mick Foley said that I that it, I guess they asked him what's within the bounds of being the right kind of Santa, and Foley said, "I believe we've had uh uh we, he, oh he basically said anyone who doesn't pose a danger to children should be able to be a Santa." He said, "We've had women posed as male Santa. Um, I graduated Santa Claus school with a very good Jewish Santa." Uh and he, uh-uh. oh, that's where I draw. That's where I draw the snow line. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. I put a bunch of. I put my peppermint sticks in a line back to back. Yeah. And I say, Sounds like it might take a while. It takes... Well, I use the small ones that are already looped together. Oh, that's going to take a long time. I just unroll it. I do a big, Oh, I see what you're saying. I have like saying. a big spindle of them. They're oh, that's... Costco. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I just... I go right in front of all those Jewish Santas and I go, mm-mm. Yeah. Not me, Casa. Uh-huh. Oh, Com- well, compadre. why would they come in your house anyway? That'd be weird. To deliver presents to my children. <laughs> oh, <laughs> You're right. I don't do I don't do make believe in that way. Yeah, you know. You're right. Like you do your thing. Do your like your blue guy or whatever the exactly. blue man group or whatever they do. Yeah. You know. 
So I guess my point is... The Hanukkah trio or something. Right. You know, trumpets. Mm -hmm. Sexuality really shouldn't come into play. I don't know how anyone would ever find out if Santa Claus, if their particular Santa Claus was gay. It seems a really inappropriate question. Yeah. So that, yeah, you're right. I guess if you would ask. Just like, you know, I think a Christmas story would be totally different if that, if, if, if he had been, if uh, Chucky or whatever his name is, Doug, Ricky, um, Cha Cha, Hal, Hal, what was, Ralphie, Ralphie, yeah. If Ralphie had been like, I want my toy gun or whatever, but also, are you gay? And oh. then had to go down that slide. Then it would have been Ralphie's fault. I think so because that's a you know a question in this day and age. Why ask? Yeah, I know. And then and who knows what would happen with his dad's leg lamp or you know the ice tongue or what happens in that movie do I care no and you know what I'll tell you what I'm sick of homophobia yeah and um I don't think that, I don't think that leg lamp is funny I don't either have you seen people with doing leg lamp I see them advertised everywhere Excuse me. I also just want to say. No way that, that I also, got picked up on the mic. I also just want to close yeah. it with in Germany last week, oh. a Santa Claus was fired because he was older than 70. Isn't that awful? What? Yeah. Germany. Well, you know, Germany, all they did, they were like, oh, we're not going to. Mm-hmm. We're not going to exert our power with for, brute force. We're going to do it with the banking system. That's right. So just right. think about that when you. Yeah. You know, think about Santa Claus getting fired. That's true. Like, get out of Germany is my yeah. point. And my point is, we are all Santa Claus in one way or another. I, I don't know. Saying, you need to lose about 15 to 20 pounds. Oh, to be th- a thin Santa Claus? I don't know what I'm saying. We should have ended this segment a no, while but ago. I'll That's do the it. point of this segment is it should be over. Oh, you think I'm fat? No, I just said that was such a dumb joke and a terrible I'll do it. one. I'll do whatever it, you Was it better or worse than the fart joke? Whatever you want me to do to lose weight, I'll do it. Really? Well, you're the one who has to look at me. You know what? You're right. I am the one that has to look at you. And I'd like to have a conversation with you that lasts about 10 to 12 hours right after this. Brian, you know me. Every time we go to a different city, I look up houses on Zillow. Yeah, you love and, real estate. And I just am like, ooh, what would it be like to own a house in this neighborhood in Toronto? Yep. And then I go into my fantasy land. And then you break down how many people we would need to live there and what it would cost each person throughout the year. Like a timeshare. I'm starting my own timeshare system. Yeah, I mean, you should. And if I had, Brian, you know you would have houses in Toronto, Palm Springs, and there's one more place I wanted to live. I don't want to live in Toronto. Fishtown in Philly. Huh? I said that would be a fun place. Oh, that would be a fun place. Yeah. yeah. You want to live in Toronto? What about Vancouver? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. There. Well, little did I know Zillow was such a monstrous place to work. Really? Yeah. So Rachel Kremer versus Kremer. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Rachel Kremer, who's a pr- previous employee, is now suing Zillow over sexual harassment claims. Oh, boy. Yeah. She was an inside sales consultant um, and... I thought you were going to say she worked for Inside Edition. I don't know why. Oh, because I said Inside? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's another show with Inside? Inside. The Insider. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Inside Her. That's inappropriate right now. But Is it? Yeah. Is it? Mm-hmm. I didn't mean relating to her. It's just funny that Is in my it? head I said Insider because that's a TV show. Is it? <sighs> okay. So, <laughs> Kremer... Um, this is basically what, according to her, allegedly happens at mm. Zillow. Um, that executives bragged, this is in general, and I'll get to her specifically. Executives bragged that the office culture led to more sexual encounters than Match.com. Wait, what? And referred to the internal office directory as Zender, named after, so basically like Zillow Tinder. Oh. So basically, just fuck who you want at Zillow. We're selling houses, people. Let's get to fucking. That like, should... just they would fuck the people that were selling the houses, too, or, like, in the no, office? it's just all inside the office. That um, is so weird. I know. She, she, here's what happened to her. Um, she experienced a sexual harassment, um, one of them being that, according to the lawsuit, um, Mr. Mrs. Kremer's supervisor referred to a new, oh, her name's Rachel, right? Referred to a new employee as Rachel 2.0, because... As he explained, she was like Rachel, but with bigger breasts and less miles on her. Okay. Wow. She also got, oh, and I forgot to pull him, but she got like texts from her coworker that was like, um, Rob is in the shower. 
they're like they're why do they have a shower no there? they were on some work thing oh, like okay. work retreat or, yeah. or business meeting and she's like rob's in the shower we were thinking about eating at 313 we were thinking about eating at 313 and your smooth vagina and then she she would text back like gross I'll, I'll be down in a minute and he's like okay and then there was another one where she tried to get it to change her password and they said they'd only do it if they if she sent them a picture of her boobs uh, they also let's see i mean that's pretty classic there was another guy who sent her a picture of his he had a, his hand i guess this is a thing that dudes do i don't know his hand was in a in a whatever rappy Glove? a rappy thing like he'd hurt it oh yeah and said i hurt my hand but sent her a picture of his hand next to his crotch and it was just his full erect dick as his thumb that no, that's good. A coworker. That's funny because on Halloween or like, you know what I mean? Dinner Halloween-y. party. Yeah. Halloweeny. Yeah. Did he that, say did he say hashtag Halloweeny? No, and that's why well, I then think it's, it's inappropriate. Arrest, then it's yeah. inappropriate. Um on two okay, so she said on two separate occasions, another sales manager cornered her while he was drunk at a party and said, I want to fuck the shit out of you. <laughs> wow. I'm trying to think if I She Oh, go ahead. If you sexually harassed anyone? No, I definitely have never sexually. Please. Well, what my do you method mean? of like when I think someone's attractive, I'm like, bye, see you never. I get scared. Well, I remember I had that company where I only I only hired men. Yeah. That's all I would do. They thought they were there to to sell uh we sold the those binders machines that you make internal uh booklets out of, I you remember, know, and they yeah. have the little spine things yes. and you flip them out and then put them back in, yes. punch the holes in. Yeah. I sold all those equipment, but I hired all these guys cuz I was like, you know, I tables wanna... are going to turn. So yeah. I'd be like, "Hey, uh Ronnie, you got those spines ready? Also, put your dick in my mouth." Yeah, that you know is, how I that, would do that? I mean, that is about the bluntest approach. You want to go to the heard. bathroom? You'll have to get the keys out of my vagina. I'll like, never I don't forget. even understand why. I'll never forget in an office Christmas party, we were in some building in New York City, Manhattan. Me and you? No. Oh. The, the company I was temping for. Mm-hmm. So why even invite me? But I went. Ultimately. <laughs> it's This is your fault. <laughs> I get the point, yeah. I don't believe in victim blaming. So I went to the office party and... I was, you know, by myself doing what I do. There was a gym, because it wasn't at that office. There was, like, a gym downstairs from where this, like, place was. There was a woman from the office in her office gear, heels, glass of wine on the elliptical machine. (laughs) I'm not even kidding. And it was all worth it. And... Why is this about sexual harassment? Oh, you're talking about drunk women. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this isn't about sexual Sorry. harassment. Sorry. Yeah. I thought we were yeah. sharing office stories. Oh, no. But I'll tell you, I did temp at a an oil company in like after, during one summer during college in Houston. And the guys would go to strip clubs for lunch. And I called the temp agency. Oh, and I was, And they would talk about it. And I would – I called my temp agency. And I was like, I can't work here anymore. Um, they just – they keep talking about strippers that when they come back from lunch. And it's making me really uncomfortable. And she told me to toughen up. And I did. I worked there for five more months. Oh, sure. Yeah. God, that's and terrible. then they had continued to hire me every summer I was out of college. So um, I knew how to stand up for myself back then, you know, like I've never known before. No, well, it's the fact that you said anything is way more than most people would have done. They used to pipe in pop music, and it was during the summer of pop music. Ugh. But it was no. when it was Brahms. It was yeah. Beethoven. Please, Vivaldi. Thank yes. you so much. Pop music. Mahler. That's so funny. It's so funny. Anytime I hear pop music, I say, "Well, another person I know that's going to burn in hell." And I laugh. That's so funny. And I drive so to the much. Palisades, and I laugh. Why do you go to the Palisades? See Steven Spielberg. Oh, okay. They. It was the summer that Faith Hill transitioned to pop music, and it was. I'll never forget it. Isn't and, that how every uh, encyclopedia entry opens? Yeah. And she, it was the song This Kiss. <gasps> it's dee 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 dee. It's the magical moment. Yeah, it's centrifugal motion. It's perpetual bliss. This kiss, this kiss. How that? That's immediately. I hear that now, and I'm like, I know every word. I don't want to buy any Revlon, like immediately. But I know every word of that song, and I didn't buy it. It was just. Every four hours it would be played. It was the be- most hellish job. And you know what also was? I can't was, believe. It was I also the summer working of... working in an office job and that coming through the speakers. And then people talking about strippers. It was from all angles. Whatever no. you, whatever's <laughs> yeah, wrong with you. You can't win. Bring it to me. There's no way you could have I did the Office Depot order wrong. It was yeah. just like, 
it was also the summer of um uh, uh strawberry wine oh my god I'm 17 gonna... hot july moon saw everything Ugh. strawberry first wine first taste of love so bittersweet Sweet on the vine, I like strawberry wine. You know I never what? wanted they to call murder. the song what it is, Moonshine. That sounds disgusting. I honestly wanted to just take an AK-47 to a Target <laughs> store while and play that song just to so everyone would stop listening to it. Totally. Okay, so she was fired from the job. And that was the antithesis of the whole her bringing this lawsuit because she was fired because they said that her sales were down, but never gave her a warning or a reason or an opportunity to explain why her sales were down. They just fired her and were like, this is the reason. But she thinks it's because she kept complaining about all this stuff and nothing ever happened. She also said that she came into the office one day and a guy was just straight watching like nasty porn and she wanted to she wanted to like report him but she was also she felt bad for him because she thought there was something actually wrong with him which is why he was doing this so she was texting this dude and she was like i want to report him but i'm also afraid they're going to fire him and he wrote back they're probably not going to fire him but you should still report him and nothing happened that guy just kept watching porn at work (laughs) which i thought was an interesting it is very interesting oh it was your porn that you did yes yeah people were just fucking fire hydrants and stuff just like enveloping Fire you just sit on vagina. anything that's rem- like pentagonal. That was my. Opinion. Oh, that's ew. Yeah, Ouch. It hurt. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure it. Di- yeah. You were in it. I shit stop signs. Oh, that is such a. <laughs> Why is that on on your special skills on your resume? It is. Minnesota accent, Texas accent, shit, shit stop, stop signs. signs. Um. So prior to the lawsuit being filed, according to people who were involved in Zillow. The guy was fired. The guy who was like the main dude who was perpetrating all this. And they've changed some of their corporate, um, the way that they deal with sexual harassment. Um, But that's, I love that these companies, they're like, no, 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 but we changed all this stuff since then. But they only did it because they got in fucking trouble. Not because they thought it was wrong in the first place. (sighs) I'm telling you that. Guess where this company, guess where Zillow is. San Francisco. No. Oh. Orange Um, County. You're kidding. Irvine. This classic. Republican. Yeah. Conservative. Yep. Bro. Yeah. All of them. All of them. Shrimp eaters. All of it. Yeah. Restaurants that are 10,000 square feet. I know all those dudes. They go to a business meeting and they're like, watch me be fancy. And they're like, one shrimp cocktail, please. Yeah. Ugh. And they just eat cold shrimp. Too many drinks that are not martinis that end in teeny. Oh, I've had all it down of it. there. Yeah. It's like what New York tried to do in the 90s but then they gave up on and then yeah. everyone in Orange County was like, we're going to keep doing this. No, in Orange County they use, the, I guarantee you they always say like, well, it's very New York. There is, There are so many people doing shoulder long sleeve, no sleeve shirts. You know what I mean? So many people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like, what, they, what are we doing They here? don't deserve that coastline. They absolutely, it's absolutely don't. Absolutely beautiful. There. They have Laguna Beach. Exactly. I had the best acai bowl I've ever had in my life at Laguna Beach. It made me disgusted that I did that in Orange County. Yeah, I don't blame you. Acai is a berry don't from say the that Amazon. To me anymore. It's too early. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so um, Zillow is a huge company. They're valued at uh, four point five billion dollars. Can you believe that? Maybe I'll buy them. With what? <sighs> no one. The power of persuasion. The power of now, the power of so just Tony Robbins books. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you, d- I d- instantly deleted Zillow off my phone, which you know. I'm oh, that must have been heartbreaking. It what? was really Can't hard. Can you do Red Stop Vine? Red, a, Red Redfin. Yeah. That. I also think Redfin isn't good because Redfin acts as a realtor. So like you have to go through them. You they sell you the house and you oh. get the commission somehow. Do you know about this? No, I see. I can't get involved. Listen, if I, uh, this is what I'm I worried about. I have a friend about. in real estate. I don't want to okay. take money away from her. Yeah. Huh? Sotheby's. She works for Sotheby's. Uh. Hi, Heather. <laughs> no, you know, I'll tell you the thing. I feel like if I started looking on Red Vine or if I went to Zillow or whatever, I would immediately start really thinking about buying a it's house. It's Redfin, and, by the way. You can go on Red Vine and try to find a house, but you, all you're going to find is delicious licorice. Then I'm going to go there because that really is what I'd like to make a down payment on. Well, you... I go to 7-Eleven every week and I say, here's 10 cents. Can I have a Red Vine? You know, and then... You the, put a down payment on the yeah, Red Vine? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> well, I, I feel like... I mean, I don't know. There's isn't a, that funny to put Red Vines for shoelaces? So, but that's not what Red Vines are. No, I know, but isn't that a funny idea for kids? Sure. You know what I mean? 
Oh, yeah. Dress up like a clown and Please put Please don't vines. take tips from Brian, children. Tie your shoes with red vines and make all the kids laugh. We, we are both under the assumption that children are listening to this show. If you, if, you're listen, if your kids are listening to this, you, you're the a bad girls, parent. Ne- red vine necklace and shoelaces for boys. Yeah. Also sexual harassment <laughs> at one of the biggest real estate apps in the country. Got it. Christmas tweets jingle all the way. Beep, 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 Oh, that's funny. Yeah. At Rooster Mania says, Brian and Aaron, the Coen Brothers remaking of Clarissa Explains It All is now my happy thought for the I don't day. remember saying that. I don't Did either. you say it? I don't know. Who knows? I never know. It's all a fever dream. I, I, I feel like... My I life wait. is a fever dream because of this show. I know. I feel like I don't remember anything. No. At Pop and Gay says... Proving Brian and Aaron right on the gender neutrality of Chris and Chris, my sister and I have the same name. One with a K and one with a C? Yeah. That is, but one's Christina and one's Christopher. But I assume, still, but still, yeah, they both go by Chris, I guess. K-R-I-S and C-H-R-I-S. That is, that is the most, what what a burden to lay on your children. Seriously. And if they're in the same place, hi, I'm Chris. Hi, I'm Chris. We're brother and sister. Yeah. Instant confusion to whoever you meet. It could only be weirder if they were twins who still slept in the same bed, like those ATL twins. Have oh, you seen those weirdos? ATL? What do they do? Foot, foot Spring head? Breaker. Huh? I don't know. At Therese Rachel says, Brian and Aaron should write, should write the spark notes for Madame Bovary. <laughs> <laughs> we should. We should just do She, she wears a wig, synopsis. right? Bovary? She wears a She's huge... A be- it's all about, busy, a, it's all about the first woman who refused to do her hair. Uh, at Jeff Morg says, too much. I'm decked out a new throwing shade swag for my birthday. Did you see that picture? Oh, yeah, that was With amazing. With the shirt and his tote? Mm-hmm. Great. And then finally, Sean underscore C says, I finally saw Gone Girl this afternoon and now fully understand the true depravity of Aaron and Brian's humor. <laughs> Why? We're depraved. Because we, we did. We, that was the movie we've talked about the most this year. I it think is. It's, I think it's come up about three or four times. Yeah. Because of the champagne bottle. The champagne it's bottle. All I talk about when and I the met parents parties. and every move she made. I loved it. I've Isn't it really funny? Did. Ben Affleck was the main part of that movie, and we haven't talked about him once. She stole that show. Oh, I met someone last night who hated that movie and hated her. And I was really? like, "Oh, my friend Rachel." She was like, "I didn't like it. I didn't like her. I didn't like the book." And I was like, "I I don't know what to say to you right now." Yeah. To like, me, it was Lord of the Rings. I mean, it's just a f- fantasy, crazy story it's just crazy that you can get lost in. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Get lost in Gone Girl. Please. Why go- do Frodo or Legolas or whatever? Oh, Legoland. No. Do you know that the someone theme just park? told me Legolas was Lord of the Rings? Yeah, with uh, Orlando Bloom in in his, oh, yeah. in his uh, cornrows That's or whatever. Right. Follow us on Twitter. I'm at Brian Safi. I'm at Giblertron. You can email us at shadethrowing at gmail dot com. You can uh, oh check out throwingshade dot com for the gifts, which are done by Sean Burpee and Kristen Rossi. Our Ian is I- our Ian. Our Ian our is intern. Ian. Our Ian is intern Colmar. Uh, well, uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Happy Christmas. Holidays. Hope Happy... you had a great holiday. Hope you're having a great holiday. Me too. Hope you had one. I hope you will have. Yeah. I hope you always Continue will have. Continue to have. And remember, Christmas isn't about TJ Maxx or Marshalls. No. It's not about discounters. No. no. It's, it's not about, about K Jewelers. Thank you. And please, if you can't get yourself a jangle bracelet from K's, then you got to go to Jared's, to but it. be ashamed about it. Everybody, I'm Justin McElroy. And I'm Dr. Sydney McElroy. Every Tuesday, we bring you Sawbones, a marital tour of misguided medicine, a show about all the dumb, weird, terrible ways that we've tried to fix each other over the years. You know, some light summer listening. Maybe you want to hear about yogurt enemas, or why we tried to eat mummies for a while, or why drinking cholera diarrhea sounded like a good idea. That and so much more is waiting for you every Tuesday right here on the Maximum Fun Network with Sawbones, a marital tour of misguided medicine. 
Hey, folks, this is Kevin Allison of the Risk Podcast, a proud member of the Maximum Fun family. If you've never heard Risk before, you got to check it out. Risk is where people tell true stories they never thought they'd dare to share in public. Stuff you could never hear on NPR. This is where writers, comedians, and people of all walks of life drop the act and get as raw and real as it gets. You know you love stories. Why not check out the show where you'll hear the most unforgettable ones you've ever heard? Check out Risk today. We are free on iTunes, of course, and we're at MaximumFun.org or at Risk-Show.com. Risk! MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.